Hello and uh, welcome to my garage today. Uh, today I'm going to be going over the uh, air intake system that we have in uh, 3 liter diesel. Uh, some of you guys have seen I have um, I do have my own air intake system and uh, I'm going to go through why I think that my design uh, is better than the, uh, the, the offerings that you see from other manufacturers. So uh, this tube right here this is, I'm going to start at the turbo because that's the most important thing. Uh, this tube here is the intermediate or the, uh, the the elbow that goes down into the turbo. So this is the turbo inlet right here. This is uh, two and three quarters, 2.75 inches in diameter. And that's, uh, as you see, that's a round tube. Okay, and then uh, this is where your CCV monitoring system. This is a temperature probe that comes in here. You guys have seen me do a lot of videos about that. Okay, so this will sit on your engine like this. Okay, and as you guys see here, this this is a uh, not a very good idea. You can see that the uh, direction of the airflow is pinched and changed. This is the assembly here. This is the tube right here that goes into that uh, that pre-turbo. And if we take a look in there, we can see that the uh, there's a muffler apparatus in there and that the tube is actually pinched to restrict airflow. Um, it gives it gives it a little bit of more room for it to uh, uh, fit into the under the cowling there, but I find that it's completely unnecessary. So um, you can see that the airflow direction has changed and uh, it is restricted a little bit. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the breakaway of the tube right here. So you can see the restrictor portion. Um, you can see how it's uh, how it is restricted there, how it comes down, and it pinches off the airflow a little bit. Uh, this this here, these uh, perforations here, help to help drown out some of the uh, intake noise. And uh, you don't hear the turbo whine like you would think that you would. Uh, you even without this device here, you the only thing you hear is the actual air whooshing through the air tube. So, yeah, this is what goes into the turbo. So, when you guys are buying the the kits from uh, AFE, AEM, S and B, uh, they are designing a tube similar to this. And I don't actually have those. I've never had them in my my hand but they're following the same exact kind of design principle and I don't know uh, what their interior diameters are if they are keeping the same outside diameter or um, if they've pinched it down as well okay the problem with building an air intake system is this is the side that comes from your mass air sensor so here is your factory OEM mass air sensor on the eco diesel this is the exact unit. Um, in here you see that there are um, this right here, this grill right here, and this grill right here are designed to prevent any kind of uh, air filtration or air filter media from being sucked in. Uh, the aluminum piece that you guys see in there, that serves a different purpose. Uh, that is designed to straighten the airflow out in, and keep it straight in front of the mass airflow sensor. Um, however, there's a problem with that, and it restricts the airflow by 20% um, of your total air income availability. So you guys have seen that I've modified my mass air sensor in another video. Now I did keep this piece on, this back portion on, for a reason. For one, to prevent uh, any kind of contamination from getting into the turbo, like uh, let's say the mass air sensor broke apart, um, or that maybe an air filter came through and got sucked in. I did leave this portion alone, and it uh, it does keep the airflow straight. I haven't had any kind of check engine lights or engine problems. I mean, I bought this air filter or air sensor um, in case I did have any kind of issues, which I never did run into. Um, here is your original um, part number there. This is, this is brand new, I've never used it. So coming into your air box, um, all of the air, the aftermarket air filter companies, 
they all claim that you're going to have like 20-30% more airflow um, using their air filter and air intake system. All they are doing is they're giving you a high flow air filter, which is true. The air, flow, air filter itself can flow quite a bit more than your paper filter. Um, cotton gauze and dry flow filters do flow more naturally than a, than a um, paper, paper element, no matter who makes it. Um, and then they're supplying an intermediate tube, which is uh, this portion right here with uh, a flexible elbow. So when I've done airflow testing um, myself on different vehicles, not on the Eco Diesel, but an intermediate tube and the air filter will do nothing if there's another restriction in the works. So, you know, you can have a straight flow tube and a really good air filter, but if you have something blocking it, then it, it negates that. And if this is restricting your airflow by 20%, then, you know, it, it's a waste of money. But, I mean, I don't recommend doing this kind of uh, cutting these out, um, you know, with people that have a, a vehicle under warranty. I mean, I, I don't recommend doing that, but I'm just, I'm just telling you guys of a restriction that's still there. So, when I see people that are on any kind of forums, no matter what kind of vehicle it is, uh, the only people that have performance uh, increases, like let's say you have the uh, LS6 or LS7 Corvette engine, um, everybody, that's the first thing everybody does is, is put a ram air intake system on, but they don't see any kind of increases. Same thing with my Mustangs, I never saw any kind of increases until you might put a aftermarket uh, airflow sensor on there that was straight through. I mean, there was no benefit to putting a cold air intake on, on any of the race cars or performance cars I've driven or modified. So, um, you know, I use those same kind of principles here that I learned in my Mustangs and my Vortec LS engines. Um, and I did, I just modified my own sensor. So that's where I got the most of my gain, uh, my towing, pulling up hills was, was uh, removing those. So that was a big restrictor there. Uh, the other thing I see that people are doing is they're they're using this pinch tube design. Well, your your inlet coming out of your air filter box right here. Uh, this is um, what was it three and a quarter inch? Let me turn this on here. I'll measure this. This was uh, three three and a quarter. So this this here is three and a quarter. Now the goofy thing about this truck is so this is uh, this is three and a quarter, right? Three point two five. This outlet size is you have to pinch it down here to two point seven five inches. So this is where my problem, my dilemma came when I created my own air intake system. Yeah, this is two point seven five inches going into the turbo. So you have, um, this truck has a little bit of potential coming from 3.25, but you have to find a way to bring it down to 2.75 coming into here. So what I did on my air intake system is I have a adapter tube that I have uh, made of silicone that goes from this down to a 2.75 inch aluminum tube. And then I have a little intermediate piece of silicone to uh, do the same kind of principle as this here. Uh, when the engine flexes. So I do keep this kind of design, but instead of having the uh, ridges like everybody else is doing, and then doing the pinch design like this, um, what I'm doing is I'm keeping the airflow uh, from the mass air sensor to the turbo without any kind of restrictions, any kind of design changes. And uh, believe it or not, when you put my tube in there, it actually rounds this tube out. So now you're keeping, you see how the tube is, is round all the way in? If you make this end round here, which is the turbo inlet, you keep it the same direction. So your, your velocity of your air that's coming through feeding your turbo never changes, and it provides a nice, clean, straight uh, direction of airflow, which is what I'm doing with my own personal truck. I haven't had any kind of uh, check engine lights, any kind of problems at all. Um, 
You know, so my design is is great. I'm, I have no reason to change it and buy somebody else's. Um, I'm using an AEM dry flow filter. Um, I've found after the past uh, 100,000 miles, I've had it in there since 20,000. Um, I found that it is uh, providing excellent reliability, cleanability. Um, you know, it saves me a lot of money. I don't have to replace the filter. I just clean it out every 10,000 miles. I just wash it out in the sink with dish soap. So, what I know about the air boxes um, that you're finding from the OEMs uh, or from the aftermarket companies is their air boxes. Uh, the AFE air box, I think, is the most retarded design. The uh, SMB box is the best design for an aftermarket air box, but I find that they're. Uh, there's no purpose for changing the airbox out itself. I think it's a waste of money because they're all using the same uh, fender air intake tube and you can only flow so much air through an airbox and through these these hoses. And the factory airbox that's on your Dodge Ram Eco Diesel is sufficient. There's no problem with it at all. That it flows enough air through its original hole entrance and they're all using the, uh, whether it's the factory or any of the aftermarkets, they're all using the same Fender air intake tube, your stock OEM air intake tube. It's not an aftermarket one. So when you guys go to the dealership and you guys have, if you were using a system like what I have, what I've done is you still retain the factory air box, the same look and feel. When you have your engine cover on there, you can almost not even tell that there's an aftermarket air intake tube kit on there. And um, I don't think that there would be any kind of warranty problems. I mean, I when as, as soon as you pop the hood and they see an AFE or an AEM aftermarket kit, they're going to go, oh, God, he's modified his truck. Um, yeah, let's void his warranty. It's it's dumb, that, that thinking and logic. But, you know, it, it raises red flags of what you're doing with your vehicle. So, anyway, that's, that's what uh, my design is. This is... Um, you know, this is what I did not like. This is what I wanted to defeat myself. So, I saved quite a bit of money doing it that way. Um, you know, it cost me $100 to build the kit myself. It took me a lot of time to figure out uh, what parts worked and what parts didn't. That was the expensive part, was uh, finding out what kind of... Uh, learning the hard way of what worked, what didn't work, what lengths of tube, and, and the research and development part kind of sucked. But, so there's that part. Uh, the other part of your air intake system um, is this tube right here. This is a muffler. This is called a muffler. And, um, yeah, I did a lot of work on this. Um, this is what it looks like when it's completely cleaned out. Alright. This is after the turbo, right before the intercooler. And this is what it looks like... Uh, from the original standpoint. So this this is actually kind of heavy. And what I did at first was I tried to I cut it open, remove this little piece in there. This will slide out. That big piece will slide out. And uh, I first I welded it together with a plastic welder, but the pressure blew it apart a couple times. And um, you know, then I tried gluing it. I forgot to sand it first. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this would blow back apart. Now, I, I'm not going to create any kind of system or sell anything or recommend anything for this piece here replacement. And the reason why is this tube blows off really, really easy. And uh, when this tube falls off, blows off, or has any kind of problem, if your hose clamps weren't tight enough, uh, the truck dies. You know, and if it dies in the middle of an intersection, you can get T-boned and die. And I don't want to rec I don't want to hurt anybody's family or be responsible for, you know, giving advice or recommendations. You know, if somebody's family gets hurt in an accident. So this here, you know, if you guys are curious about it, I'm just showing you what it looks like inside. Um, performance differences when I put my silicone tube on. What it did was it. It's leaving me in a higher range, a higher gear range, like let's say eighth gear when I'm towing. And the problem is, is it's boost, it's increasing my boost to compensate, and it actually is hurting my gas mileage um, uh, with the, with this tube removed and being straight through. 
And um, yeah, it, if I don't have a trailer on, it's gosh dang wonderful. I mean, wow, it gives you a lot more uh, highway mileage, but it, it is literally um, slaughtering me when I have a trailer or a heavy load in because of the increase of uh, uh, gear range that it put me in. Now it's staying in a higher gear range, so um, you're hitting the gas a little bit harder to keep it up, uh, to keep it from losing speed. So I'd say high-end performance. This is uh, the higher-end performance. This will allow you to flow a lot more air without something like this. But uh, if you want to modify it, I would really recommend going with the AFE Blade Runner system. They have a real professional kit. It'll work the first time. Um, you know, the intercooler they have and the, the, the cold side tube you know, you won't have any kind of problems. I think it's well worth the money, and that's probably something I'm going to upgrade to next year. Um, they do sell the uh, the pipes alone uh, without the intercooler. Uh, the pricing is really, really super high. I think it's really, really expensive, but um, I'm going to do the intercooler too because I'm actually seeing my factory intercooler failing. Um, I have oil seepage along the uh, driver's side. Um, you can kind of see where it's. it looks kind of like my radiator failure. So I'll be going with the uh, AFE Blade Runner system next year. Um, kind of got to save up some money for it. Things $1,300. Bucks. But, um, so that's your air intake system. Hope you guys enjoy it and learn something. And um, There you go.